For nearly 30 years, the woman behind the tragic death of Selena Quintanilla, Yolanda Saldivar, has remained silent until now. At 63, Saldivar is finally breaking her silence, offering her version of events that shook the world. But can her words change what we've all believed for so long? The Tragic Death of Selena Quintanilla For nearly three decades, Yolanda Saldivar's name has been synonymous with the heartbreaking murder of Latin music sensation Selena Quintanilla. The world watched in shock as Saldivar, once a trusted confidant and the president of Selena's fan club, was convicted of killing the beloved singer in 1995. Since then, Saldivar has remained largely silent, leaving fans and the media to speculate about her true motives. Before diving into the major revelation, we must revisit the heartbreaking event that took Selena from us far too soon. Born in Lake Jackson, Texas, Selena was a rising star who had already made an indelible mark on the world of Tejano music by the time she was in her early 20s. Her soulful voice, vibrant energy, and undeniable charm had earned her fans across the globe. From the moment she burst onto the scene, it was clear that Selena was destined for greatness. She was the face of a new era in Latin music, breaking barriers for Spanish-speaking artists and paving the way for future generations. Her fans adored her, not just for her music, but for her humility and warmth. However, her meteoric rise to fame was cut short on March 31st, 1995. That day, Selena met with Yolanda Saldivar at a Days Inn Motel in Corpus Christi, Texas. What began as a meeting to resolve financial disputes and retrieve missing documents quickly spiraled into tragedy. In a heated argument, Saldivar pulled a gun and shot Selena in the back as the young singer tried to flee. Selena, in a desperate attempt to survive, ran for help bleeding as she made her way to the lobby of the motel. Her last words, Yolanda, room 158, were a heartbreaking shout out to the betrayal she had just experienced. Selena was rushed to the hospital, but despite doctors' efforts, the 23-year-old star was pronounced dead from blood loss. The world had lost not only a talented musician, but a symbol of hope and unity for millions Fans across the globe were left in shock, unable to process how someone so vibrant and full of life could be taken in such a senseless act of violence. In those moments, the world of Latin music stood still. The tragedy didn't just end with Selena's death. It unleashed waves of grief, anger, and disbelief as fans grappled with the fact that the person responsible was someone Selena had once trusted. Saldivar was quickly arrested after a nine-hour standoff with police, during which she threatened to take her own life. She was eventually sentenced to life in prison, and for years, her silence only added to the sense of mystery and unresolved pain surrounding the case. Yolanda Saldivar, From Fan to Killer It's hard to believe that the woman responsible for Selena's death once claimed to be her biggest fan. Yolanda Saldivar's journey from devoted admirer to trusted confidant and ultimately killer is one of the most chilling aspects of Selena's story. What began as an innocent admiration quickly turned into something far more dangerous as Saldivar's obsession with Selena grew. Yolanda first came into Selena's life in the early 1990s, reaching out to the Quintanilla family with an idea. She wanted to start a fan club for Selena in San Antonio. Selena's father, Abraham, was initially hesitant, but Yolanda's persistence eventually won him over. As the president of Selena's fan club, Yolanda quickly proved her dedication. She organized events, connected with fans, and worked tirelessly to support Selena's growing career. To many, she appeared to be a loyal supporter who would do anything for the star. Over time, Yolanda became more than just the president of the fan club. She became a part of Selena's inner circle. Selena, always trusting and warm-hearted, welcomed Yolanda into her life with open arms. 
She saw Yolanda as someone she could rely on, a friend who genuinely cared about her success. This trust extended beyond the fan club. In 1994, when Selena opened her boutiques, Selena Etc. in Corpus Christi and San Antonio, she appointed Yolanda as the manager. It seemed like a natural choice. Yolanda had proven her loyalty and dedication. With Selena's busy tour schedule and increasing fame, she needed someone she could trust to oversee her businesses. Yolanda, eager to be even closer to Selena, gladly accepted the role. But behind the scenes, things were not as they seemed. As Selena focused on her music and expanding her career, Yolanda was quietly taking advantage of the trust placed in her. Over time, employees at the boutiques started raising concerns about Yolanda's behavior. They noticed how she treated others poorly when Selena wasn't around and how she seemed to be mismanaging the business. But it wasn't just her attitude that raised red flags. It was the money, unpaid bills, missing funds, and discrepancies in the financial records started piling up, all pointing to one person, Yolanda. By early 1995, Abraham Quintanilla had enough. He discovered that Yolanda had been embezzling money from both the fan club and Selena's boutiques. In total, she had stolen over $60,000. Confronted with this betrayal, Selena was devastated. She had trusted Yolanda with not just her business, but with her friendship. On March 9, 1995, Selena, along with her father and sister, confronted Yolanda about the missing money. Yolanda, caught off guard, didn't deny the accusations, nor did she offer any explanation. Abraham demanded that Yolanda cut all ties with Selena and return the missing financial records. But Selena, ever kind-hearted and loyal, wasn't ready to fully let go. Despite her father's warnings, she believed that Yolanda was still essential for managing the boutique's business in Mexico. She felt that the situation could be salvaged and perhaps Yolanda could make amends. It was this faith in Yolanda that ultimately led to the tragic events of March 31, 1995. That day, Selena went to meet Yolanda at the Days Inn in Corpus Christi to retrieve the missing documents and finalize their separation. What happened next was a betrayal so deep that it shocked the world. In a desperate attempt to cover up her actions, Yolanda pulled out a gun and shot Selena as she tried to leave. The very person who had once admired and idolized Selena had now become the one to take her life. Saldivar's Claims Nearly 30 years after the tragic death of Selena Quintanilla, Yolanda Saldivar has decided it's time to tell her side of the story. In a controversial new docuseries, she claims that the shooting was never meant to happen, insisting it was a tragic accident. According to Saldivar, she didn't pull the trigger out of malice, but out of fear and confusion. She argues that she has been unfairly portrayed as a cold-blooded killer, and that the world doesn't understand the real story behind that fateful day. But Saldivar's version of events raises more questions than answers. For years, she has been known for her dishonesty. After all, this was a woman who stole from the very person who trusted her most. So can we really believe her claims now? In the docu-series, she paints herself as a victim of circumstance, someone who was misunderstood and wronged by the media. She asserts that her intentions were never to harm Selena and that the truth is far more complex than the public has been led to believe. Saldivar also claims to have been privy to intimate secrets about Selena's life, suggesting that their relationship was deeper and more complicated than anyone realized. She hints that there were hidden aspects of Selena's personal and professional world, things that could change how people view both her and Saldivar. But this begs the question, is Yolanda Saldivar trying to expose the truth or is she simply manipulating the narrative to suit her own needs? After all these years, it's difficult to separate fact from fiction, especially when it comes from someone with a history of betrayal. 
Reactions to the docu-series Unsurprisingly, Saldivar's claims in the docu-series have sparked immediate backlash. Selena's family, still mourning the loss of their beloved daughter and sister, has been vocal in their condemnation of the series. They have labeled it as nothing more than an attempt to exploit Selena's memory for financial gain. To them, Saldivar's so-called revelations are nothing but lies, designed to shift blame and cast doubt on what really happened. Fans, too, have reacted with outrage. For many, the pain of losing Selena has never fully healed. She was more than just a singer. She was a symbol of hope, pride, and cultural identity for millions of people, especially within the Latinx community. To hear Saldivar now trying to rewrite the story, nearly three decades later, feels like an insult to Selena's legacy. Social media has been flooded with messages of anger and disbelief, with many fans pledging to boycott the docu-series altogether. They don't want to give Yolanda a platform, especially if it means tarnishing Selena's memory. Adding to the controversy is the timing of the docu-series release. Saldivar is eligible for parole in 2025, and many are questioning whether this documentary is simply a PR move to sway public opinion in her favor. Could this be Saldivar's way of positioning herself as misunderstood or wronged, hoping it might influence the parole board? Her critics certainly think so. To them, this entire project reeks of manipulation and self-interest, with little regard for the real victim, Selena. As the world watches, one thing is clear. No matter what Saldivar claims, the pain of Selena's death runs deep. Fans, family, and even those who were merely touched by her music are united in their belief that Selena's legacy must be protected. For them, this isn't just a docu-series. It's a reminder of the betrayal that took someone irreplaceable from the world. The question remains, can any amount of truth from Saldiva ever change what really happened, or is she just rewriting history in an attempt to save herself? Selena Quintanilla's Legacy Even in death, Selena Quintanilla's light has never dimmed. It's been almost three decades since her tragic passing, yet her music, her style, and her spirit continue to thrive, deeply ingrained in the hearts of millions. What's most remarkable about Selena's legacy is not just the influence she had during her short life, but how that influence has only grown stronger with time. Selena's impact on music transcended language barriers. At a time when Latin music was primarily celebrated within its own borders, Selena was a trailblazer who bridged the gap between Tejano rhythms and mainstream American pop. Her unique blend of traditional Mexican sounds, pop and cumbia, had an undeniable magnetism, captivating both English and Spanish-speaking audiences alike. Selena wasn't just a singer, she was a cultural ambassador, carrying the sound of Tejano music far beyond the Texas-Mexico border and into the global spotlight. Her influence didn't stop at music. Fashion became another powerful tool in Selena's self-expression. From the glittering bustiers to her iconic purple jumpsuit, Selena's bold style choices left a mark on the fashion world. She embodied confidence and creativity mixing high fashion with street style and always adding her own flair. For many, Selena wasn't just a musician, she was a fashion icon, someone who could inspire confidence in fans simply by being herself. She made young Latinas feel seen, giving them permission to embrace their identities unapologetically, and her look became as influential as her music. Despite her untimely death, Selena's cultural impact didn't stop. In fact, it only grew. In 1995, just months after her passing, her posthumous album, Dreaming of You, was released, a powerful blend of her Latin roots and English pop ballads that she had been working on before her death. With hits like I Could Fall in Love and the title track, Selena became a posthumous sensation and the album became a symbol of her unfulfilled potential. 
The fact that she reached such monumental success after her death solidified Selena as not just a Latin music star, but a global phenomenon. Her legacy, though, was never confined to just the charts. Selena's impact on popular culture is still palpable today. The 1997 biographical film Selena, starring a then up-and-coming Jennifer Lopez, introduced her life and music to a new generation. The film not only paid tribute to Selena's life, but also launched Lopez's own career, with the actress often crediting the role as life-changing. For fans, the movie became a way to connect with Selena once again, to relive her journey, her joys, and the heartbreak of her tragic end. In many ways, Lopez's portrayal immortalized Selena, making sure her story would be told and retold for years to come. Selena's enduring presence isn't just found in films or albums. In 2017, she was honored with a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, a powerful symbol of her lasting impact. The ceremony drew thousands of fans, a shout out to how deeply loved and revered she remains. To this day, young artists cite Selena as their inspiration, whether it's through her music, her fashion, or her fearlessness in the face of adversity. Her influence continues to ripple across generations, making her a timeless figure in both music and culture. Selena's legacy isn't simply about the songs she sang or the way she dressed. It's about the barriers she broke and the hope she gave to so many. She represented a new possibility for Latinas and women everywhere, showing that you could be successful while staying true to your roots. Even though she was taken too soon, Selena's legacy continues to bloom year after year, reminding us all of what could have been and how much she still has to give. Inside the mind of Yolanda Saldivar. While Selena's legacy continues to inspire, Yolanda Saldivar's name remains forever etched in infamy. The story of how a woman who once admired Selena who worked closely with her, who was trusted by her, could end up taking her life, is one of the most haunting aspects of the tragedy. How does admiration turn into obsession? How does a fan become a murderer? Yolanda Saldivar's journey into Selena's life began innocently enough. She was a registered nurse in San Antonio, but her passion was for music, specifically Tejano music. When Selena's career started to rise, Saldivar quickly became a fan, eventually convincing Selena's father, Abraham, to let her start a fan club. At first, it all seemed harmless, just a devoted fan who wanted to support her favorite singer. But soon, Saldivar's involvement in Selena's life grew deeper as she went from running the fan club to managing Selena's boutiques. Behind the scenes, however, Saldivar's admiration for Selena started to take a darker turn. Her obsession with the singer began to shift from support to control. Many who worked with Saldivar noticed how possessive she became over Selena, often creating barriers between Selena and other people in her life, particularly at the boutiques. Staff members reported that Saldivar would only be kind when Selena was around, but as soon as the star left, her demeanor would change. She became harsh, manipulative, and secretive, trying to isolate Selena from anyone she perceived as a threat to her position. Psychologists have often pointed to Saldivar's dangerous fixation on Selena as the root of the eventual tragedy. What started as admiration turned into an obsession, and with that came the need for control. As Selena's star rose higher, Saldivar felt her grip on the singer slipping. The jealousy and fear of losing her place in Selena's life began to consume her, leading her down a path of manipulation and betrayal. Saldivar started embezzling money, but it wasn't just about the cash. It was about maintaining control over Selena's life and career. She needed Selena to depend on her to keep her close. Experts in criminal psychology often describe this type of behavior as stemming from a deep need for power and control. Saldivar likely saw Selena's growing success as a threat to the special relationship she believed they had. The more successful Selena became, 
the more people entered her life and the more threatened Saldivar felt. For someone like Saldivar, who was already teetering on the edge of obsession, this loss of control was unbearable. When the truth about her embezzlement finally came to light, Saldivar's carefully constructed world began to crumble. Facing the possibility of losing Selena's trust and, by extension, her place in Selena's life, Saldivar acted out of desperation. The tragic events of March 31, 1995, weren't just the result of a financial dispute. They were the culmination of years of unhealthy fixation and an inability to let go. Yolanda Saldivar's mind is a puzzle of contradictions. On the one hand, she claimed to love and admire Selena, but on the other, she couldn't stand to see her succeed without her. This toxic mix of love, jealousy, and obsession created the perfect storm, leading to one of the most devastating betrayals in music history. The psychological profile of Saldivar paints the picture of someone who was deeply insecure, someone who needed to be needed. Her attachment to Selena wasn't just about friendship or admiration, it was about validation. Selena's success and warmth gave her a sense of purpose, but once that started to slip away, she couldn't handle it. What she saw as betrayal, Selena's growing independence, became the final trigger in her spiral toward violence. The question remains, could anyone have seen this coming? Many who worked closely with Selena expressed concerns about Saldivar's behavior long before the tragic day. But Selena, ever trusting and kind-hearted, believed in her friend, even when others warned her to be cautious. In the end, Saldivar's obsession destroyed not only Selena's life, but also any chance Saldivar had of being remembered as anything other than the person who took away a shining star. Controversial Parole Could Saldivar be released? As 2025 approaches, a cloud of controversy looms over the possibility of Yolanda Saldivar's release on parole. The mere thought of her walking free after being convicted of murdering one of Latin music's most beloved icons sends shockwaves through Selena Quintanilla's fans and supporters. Saldivar, now 63 years old, has spent nearly three decades behind bars, but for many, that time has not been enough to atone for the devastating loss she inflicted. The parole hearing brings up an emotional and painful question. Should Saldivar, the woman who robbed the world of Selena, be allowed to re-enter society? For those who knew and loved Selena, as well as the millions of fans who continue to honor her legacy, the answer is a resounding no. To them, the idea of Saldivar's release feels like an injustice, as though Selena's memory is being diminished. It's not just about a legal process, it's about protecting Selena's legacy and ensuring that the person responsible for her death faces the consequences of her actions for the rest of her life. Saldivar's parole eligibility has reignited public anger, with people from all walks of life voicing their outrage. Many of Selena's fans, who were children when she was murdered, are now adults with their own children, and the pain of that loss is still raw. To them, Saldivar's potential release feels like reopening an old wound that has never fully healed. Social media has been flooded with calls to block her parole, with petitions circulating and hashtags trending as fans rally to keep her behind bars. But what's even more troubling is the timing of Saldivar's docu-series, Selena and Yolanda, Secrets Between Us. Many believe that the release of the series is no coincidence. Some speculate that the docu-series is part of a broader attempt to sway public opinion, and possibly even the parole board, by casting Saldivar in a different light. Throughout the series, she presents herself as misunderstood, claiming that the shooting wasn't intentional and that she was unfairly portrayed as a villain in the media. Could this narrative be an effort to soften her image just as her parole hearing approaches? The idea that Saldivar is using the docu-series to manipulate her public image is not far-fetched. Throughout history, 
we've seen convicted criminals attempt to rewrite their stories, trying to gain sympathy or cast doubt on their guilt. But in this case, it feels particularly cruel. To many of Selena's fans, the docu-series isn't just disrespectful, it's an outright insult. They see it as Saldivar's attempt to profit off the death of the very person she betrayed. It's as though she is using Selena's name once again, this time not to control her life, but to improve her own. The emotional toll this has taken on Selena's family and fans is immeasurable. They have already lost so much, and now they face the possibility of seeing the woman responsible for their loss walk free. For many, the only solace has been knowing that Saldiva remains behind bars, serving a life sentence for her crime. But if she is released, what does that say about justice? Is 30 years enough for taking a life, especially a life as beloved and influential as Selena's? The nation is divided. On one side are those who believe in the legal system's ability to determine when someone has paid their debt to society. They argue that if Saldivar has shown remorse and met the legal criteria for parole, then she should be considered for release like any other inmate. But on the other side are the millions who believe that no amount of time served could ever make up for what she did. To them, Saldivar's crime wasn't just a murder, it was the theft of a voice that could have continued to inspire, heal, and unite people for generations. And this is where the pain truly lies. Selena wasn't just a star. She was a cultural icon, a beacon of hope for the Latino community and beyond. Her life, though tragically short, touched so many, and her death left a void that can never be filled. Allowing Saldivar to go free feels like erasing the gravity of her crime, as though Selena's life and legacy are worth nothing more than 30 years behind bars. The docu-series has added fuel to the fire. By releasing it just before her parole hearing, Saldivar has once again thrust herself into the spotlight, something that many believe she craves. The series attempts to cast doubt on the narrative that the world has known for decades. But for Selena's fans, there is no doubt. Saldivar's guilt is not in question, and no amount of new revelations will change that. What the world witnessed on March 31, 1995, was an act of betrayal so deep that it will never be forgotten, from mourning to anger. When Selena was killed, it wasn't just her family who grieved. It was an entire community, an entire generation. Her death was a collective loss, and the mourning that followed spanned continents. People from all over the world felt the sting of her absence, and even today, the pain is palpable. For many, Selena's music had been a source of joy, pride, and connection to their culture. Her loss was personal, and the grief that followed was immense. In the days following her death, fans gathered in the streets, holding candlelight vigils and playing her music on repeat. They wore t-shirts emblazoned with her face, held up signs that read, We love you, Selena, and openly wept in public. The mourning was global. Across Latin America, Europe, and the United States, Selena's voice could be heard but it was now a reminder of the life that had been stolen. Selena's music continues to be a source of comfort for fans today. Though she is no longer with us, her songs remain timeless. Fans still celebrate her birthdays, her achievements, and her music, finding solace in her legacy. For them, Selena's light has never dimmed, but with the release of Saldivar's docu-series, that grief has turned to anger. The reaction to the series has been swift and fierce. Fans have taken to social media to express their outrage, calling the series a sham and a betrayal of Selena's memory. For them, Saldivar's attempt to justify her actions is nothing short of despicable. They see it as an attack on Selena's legacy, a selfish ploy to cast herself as a victim rather than the perpetrator of a heinous crime. Many fans have vowed to boycott the series, refusing to give Saldiva the attention she so desperately craves. To them, 
watching the series feels like giving power to the person who took Selena away. What's especially painful for fans is the idea that Saldivar is once again benefiting from Selena's name. Even in prison, it seems, she is finding ways to use Selena's legacy for her own gain. This is what has angered fans the most, the idea that Saldivar could be using the very person she killed to try and rewrite her story, to sway public opinion just as her parole hearing approaches. In response to the docu-series, fans have rallied to defend Selena's legacy. Online campaigns have been launched to ensure that Saldivar's narrative doesn't gain traction. Social media accounts dedicated to honoring Selena's memory have been flooded with tributes, messages of love, and reminders of who Selena was. Fans are determined to keep the focus on Selena, not on the woman who ended her life. The anger is not just about the series, it's about protecting Selena's legacy from being tarnished. Fans refuse to let Saldivar dictate the narrative, especially now with her parole hearing on the horizon. For them, this is a battle to preserve the memory of someone who meant so much to so many. They won't let Saldivar's attempts to rewrite history go unchallenged. Selena's legacy is something that her fans have fiercely protected for nearly three decades and they are not about to stop now. As long as Saldivar tries to benefit from Selena's name, fans will be there to defend her. To them, Selena's legacy is sacred and they won't allow anyone, especially her killer, to diminish that. Will Saldivar's story change anything? As Yolanda Saldivar prepares to share her side of the story, the world can't help but ask, what's really at stake? The upcoming docu-series promises revelations, confessions, and a perspective that's been hidden for nearly three decades. But for so many, the question remains, does any of this even matter? Can a carefully crafted narrative truly reshape the world's perception of a tragedy so deeply embedded in our collective memory? For Saldivar, there's a lot on the line. Her parole hearing in 2025 looms large and whether or not she admits it, the timing of this docu-series is no coincidence. If her goal is to stir public sympathy or at least cast doubt on the events of that fateful day in 1995, the series could be a strategic move. By framing herself as misunderstood or painting the shooting as a tragic accident rather than an intentional act, she might hope to sway the court of public opinion and perhaps even the legal system but can her narrative be trusted? After nearly 30 years of silence, why now? These are the questions on everyone's mind. Throughout her trial, Saldivar was portrayed as manipulative and deceitful, someone who betrayed the very person who had given her so much trust and loyalty. To now claim that things didn't happen as they appeared, that the shooting wasn't what the world believes it to be, feels like an attempt to rewrite history. And for many, especially Selena's fans and family, this reeks of desperation rather than truth. The world saw Selena's final moments play out in heartbreaking detail. We know about the confrontation in that motel room, about Selena's desperate attempt to escape, and her final words naming her killer. How could any narrative from Saldivar possibly undo those facts? Her claims that the shooting wasn't intentional are met with skepticism because at the end of the day, the reality is this. Selena was shot. Selena is no longer here. No amount of framing, no docu-series, no so-called revelations can change that core truth. The tragedy of Selena's death is something that transcends the events themselves. It's not just about what happened on that day, it's about the potential that was lost, the joy and inspiration Selena brought to millions and the void left behind in her absence. Her death didn't just impact her family and fans, it impacted an entire community. Selena's life symbolized hope, progress, and the possibility of breaking barriers, and her death shattered those possibilities in an instant. Saldivar's attempt to change the narrative to offer some kind of justification will forever be overshadowed by the reality of what she took away. 
Selena's death is a wound that never fully healed for those who loved her, and no amount of storytelling can undo that hurt. This isn't just about clearing a name or shifting blame. It's about a life that was tragically cut short. For Selena's fans, watching Saldivar try to offer a different version of events is more than frustrating. It's painful. It's as if she's attempting to minimize the depth of her betrayal, to reduce Selena's loss to a misunderstanding. But the world knows better. No matter what Saldivar says, the tragedy remains. A young woman, full of life, with an undeniable future ahead of her, was taken in an act of violence that can never be justified.